Hi, this is Pratima and you are watching Planet Physiology. In previous session, we have studied how to prepare and stain smear for differential leukocyte count. Today we shall learn how to examine this stained smear under microscope. So let's begin. Take your properly stained smear and observe it first under low power that is 10x objective to check for its quality. If your smear is thin and properly stained, you will see individual RBCs in the form of tiny pink dots in the entire field and few stained WBCs dispersed among them as indicated by these arrows. But if you find RBCs are overlapping each other, you may be observing head end of the smear. In this case, just move your slide to get the body of smear under the focus. If the entire smear shows overlapped RBCs, it means the smear is thick and you should use another smear for counting the cells. If you are getting too many gaps between the RBCs, then you may be observing tail end of the smear and hence just move the slide to focus the body of the smear. Gaps may be because of presence of striations while preparing the smear and in this case you need to change the slide. Hence, it is very important to observe the smear against light before staining it. For details, refer my previous video for smear preparation and staining. Link for the same is given in the description box below. Another possibility that you see black dots throughout the smear. Those are stain particles. It indicates that either the stain has dried up on the smear or you have not washed the slide properly. So try to wash the slide thoroughly and if it works, proceed for the counting. But if not, change the slide. Okay, if you have ideal smear with you, place a drop of cedar wood oil on the body of the smear towards the head end and bring the oil immersion objective in position. See from the side and immerse the objective in the oil. Now see through the eyepiece and focus the cells by using fine adjustment. This is how you will see the cells now. Majority of the cells which you visualize are RBCs and there may be few stained WBCs amongst them. Sometimes there may not be any WBC in the entire field. Don't worry. Move the slide slowly towards the tail end while looking for any stained cells in the field. As soon as you come across stained cell, stop moving. Now identify this WBC and note it down by its initial alphabet in your observation table. So before starting to count, keep 10 by 10 grid ready in your note. Alternatively, if you have cell counter, you can just hit the counter button indicating that particular cell. If there are more than one WBCs in the field, identify each of them and note them all in the observation table. Mention each cell in a separate box. Now again continue to move in the same direction till you come across new cells. Identify them and note them. As you are slowly moving towards the tail end of the smear, at one point, RBCs start separating. This indicates that you are entering the tail end of the smear. So now do not move further in the same direction. Instead, move the slide downwards by one field and then towards the head end of the smear while counting the cells. When you reach the head end where RBCs start overlapping, Again move one step down and then towards the tail end. This is called as zigzag way of counting. This avoids counting of same WBCs again. Continue this procedure till you count 100 WBCs. Ok, before proceeding further, let us first learn how to identify different types of WBCs so that you can easily identify them while viewing the smear. Nucleus of WBC being very prominent part, 
let's start with it so observe the nucleus whether it is lobed or unlobed if nucleus is lobed observe how many lobes of the nucleus are there if nucleus is multi lobed that is it has more than two lobes then definitely the cell is neutrophil but if the nucleus is bilobed it can be any of the granulocyte so now observe the granules in the cytoplasm for their texture and color if the granules are fine and has taken both the components of the stain the cell is neutrophil it is bilobed neutrophil sometimes you may come across a single lobed neutrophil in this case the nucleus is almost like a c shaped and the cell is called as band neutrophil but if you see that the granules within the cytoplasm are coarse and pink or orange in color the cell is eosinophil and if the granules are very coarse but larger in size and blue in color then the cell is basophil usually basophil granules are more in quantity and they completely fill the cytoplasm of the cell hence obscure the nucleus so usually nucleus of basophil is not clearly visible now coming to the second part if the nucleus is single unlobed observe the cell size and the quantity of cytoplasm within it if the cell is of same size as that of rbc's and contain very scanty cytoplasm it is small lymphocyte and if the size is larger than rbc's with scanty cytoplasm then it is large lymphocyte if the size of the cell which you are observing is almost double that of rbc's and you can see quite a lot of cytoplasm say around 50% of the cytoplasm within the cell then the cell is monocyte nucleus of monocyte is usually kidney shaped but it may be oval as well so if you remember these important key points identification of wbc's is easy task so now let's visualize the smear under the microscope and try to identify and count the wbc's currently this field is showing only rbc's and platelets so platelets are marked here some are in bunches some are separate so move your smear slowly till you come across any wbc so here is your first wbc and it is small lymphocyte because you can see that the nucleus is single and occupies almost entire cell and the cell size is same as that of rbc you can also note very scanty cytoplasm near the indentation of the nucleus so note it as l in the first box of the observation table and move forward now here is a multi lobed cell so it's neutrophil mark it in the second box as n again move the slide forward and now we have large lymphocyte you can note that it is larger than rbc nucleus occupies almost entire cell and very scanty cytoplasm which is visible at its upper side so note it as lymphocyte in the observation table now again moving forward now in this field we can see three wbc's two are neutrophils and the bottom one is monocyte you can easily make out kidney shaped nucleus which is eccentric that is towards one side of the cell and there is quite a lot of cytoplasm visible also cell size is more so all these features confirm the cell is monocyte so note it in the observation as monocyte so we have noted three cells in the observation two neutrophils and one monocyte now i am moving the slide without telling the names of the wbc's you can pause the video and try to identify the cell as you get the next wbc's
basophil is very rare to get so you may not even get a single basophil now i am approaching the tail portion of the smear because i can see many gaps between the rbcs so now i am moving the slide down and then backwards towards the head okay here you can find eosinophil which is showing bilobed nucleus and pink color granules within the cytoplasm In this field you can find neutrophils eosinophils as well as lymphocyte So now here are some cells to identify so pause the video have a close look at each of the field and try to identify each of these cells So I think you have enough practice of cell identification So once you finish counting 100 WBCs then count how many cells of each type are there like how many neutrophils how many basophils how many eosinophils and accordingly mentioned the number against the particular cell this represents your differential wbc count in terms of percentage in normal person neutrophil count ranges between 50 to 70% eosinophils 1 to 4% and basophils 0 to 1% it means When you count 100 WBCs you may come across one basophil or none of them that is the meaning of 0 to 1% Then the normal lymphocyte count is 20 to 40% and monocyte count is 2 to 8% Any deviation from this range indicates presence of some kind of pathology For example neutrophilia that is increase in neutrophil count indicates presence of acute infection while monocytosis indicates presence of chronic infections so learn the conditions that increase or decrease each type of wbc as well as the terms to refer them here are some important viva questions on this topic what is composition of lichman stain and state functions of each component what do you mean by fixation time and staining time You can refer my previous video for this answer. Why is cedar wood oil used and is there any alternative for it? What are the features of ideal smear? Again you can refer my previous video for this. Explain the terms neutrophilia and neutropenia and list the conditions for each. Name the terms which refer to increase and decrease in lymphocyte count and name two conditions for each name the terms which refer to increase and decrease in monocyte count and mention two conditions for each of this name two conditions where eosinophils and basophil count is increased as well as decreased and what are the terms for them how will you differentiate monocyte from large lymphocyte and what are the microscopic adjustments while using oil immersion objective so do you find this video useful if so don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends and hit the like button thank you for watching and see you in the next video